Your present moment is all you have. Make it the best one you possibly can. Make it the most loving one you possibly can. And let the rest take care of itself. Because if you do that, you literally are going to change the world. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world right now. I am Louisa, your host, and our guest today is John Davis. John Davis walked with Jesus. John Davis underwent a past life regression and remembered the life of John, the beloved apostle. He shares the lessons he learned under Jeshua ben Joseph, Jesus's tutelage. This is his story and this is his passion. John, I can't wait to hear and share your experiences. Welcome to Passion Harvest. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm actually a, a fan of your channel, so I'm very excited to be here as well. well. Thank you. Wow, what an incredible story. I mean, I've got quite a few questions to ask you, but um, 19 different readers told you that you had the same past life. That's remarkable. Yeah, and what was interesting is the majority of them uh, walked up to me out of the blue. I didn't go in for readings. Um, the very first one, I was actually at a party and someone was sitting across the room looking at me and she kept staring at me and I was getting very awkward about the whole, whole person oh, staring okay. at me thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, what's this weird thing? And she walked over and she says, you know that you walked with Jesus in a past life, right? Wow. And I was like, I was like, whoa, this is so weird. Of course, I was being a Catholic boy. My mom had her master's degree in liturgy. So this was not, this was not a good thing. <laughs> you, know, you know, we don't believe in psychics in the Catholic faith. Um, so I was, I was, uh, I was like, okay, whatever. So I ended up getting in second reading with her because at this point I was then curious, and so, and the second one she did it again. So then the next time I was walking through a holistic fair, and I was just walking along because I had friends who were selling their wares there, and I was walking down along the the, the aisle where all the readers were, and a lady stopped the reading, <laughs> mid reading, and came out into the aisle, grabbed my arm, and said, "You were John the Beloved." And, I was, and it just it went like that on and on and on until finally um, I read a book called The Messengers about a guy who remembered being the, the apostle uh, Paul. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. So I said, well, let's, let's see if one of the readers he had read for him, get anything. And I, I call up to set the appointment. She says, oh my God, you're John the Beloved on the phone setting up the appointment. <laughs> so it was like one after another. Finally, after 19 of them, Total. And it's very specific I, as well. Very, very specific, which was blowing me away. Um, after 19 of them, I decided I, I really wanted to have another form of verification other than psychics. I wanted something different. So I, I found a past life regression therapist in Washington, D.C., and I went in and um, remembered meeting, walking with Jeshua Ben Joseph, which was what I remember his name being. He called me Hanna, but my name was Johannes Ben Zebedee, the son of, son of Zebedee. Um, and I, um, I walked with him, and in the regression, I, I witnessed the crucifixion as well, which you hear me screaming in the, in the, in the regression. It's, it's pretty horrifying. And still to this day, it, it chokes me up whenever I, I hear it. Gosh, and, and prior to this, did you even believe in reincarnational past lives? I had never even really given it a thought because it wasn't part of my belief system being raised Catholic. I mean, I was an, I was an altar boy. I went through 12 years of CCD, basically Sunday school. I went through all the way, all the way through my 12th grade year of high school. I went to the CCD. Um, and so I, it was just not in my, in my belief system at all. I didn't had any, or even in my, my view because I had never even thought of it. Um, after this, I became very fascinated by it. And I started studying it. But what happened really that fascinated me even more so than that was as I, as I delved into that experience, I, I started remembering these teachings that were not, that were not Christian in a way, you know, modern Christianity. Mm -hmm. they, were more, they, they seemed to lean more towards like Buddhists in a, in a, in a way. And the more I started diving into it, um, the more I realized that, that you know, we are all here to experience our, 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 um, our source, God, 
love, whatever you want to call it, um, through being here and feeling our separation through fear. And so I, I started having this experience where I was understanding that we're supposed to be love. And so that, I mean, that's, that's the goal of it all. And it really became fascinating the more I dug in, because as I dug in, I started having what spontaneous regression memories. And I talked to my regression therapist. I said, is this normal? She said, I've, I've heard of it. I've never had it happen to one of my patients, but it what happened was I, I would have like a, a situation in this life. And then suddenly I would have full memory of that life. And when I say full memory, this is, this is where it get, people get confusing. They think, is this just in your head? Is this? It literally felt like I was standing on the beach when I met him. I could feel the wind. I could Jesus. smell the air. Sorry, yeah, just to clarify yeah. you. Yes. And if you want, you want me to tell you about that very first meeting? Sure. And I guess I want to know what it's like to meet Jesus, to yeah. learn from him. And what was it like? It was, oh, let's, let me just tell you the story because sure. I think you're going to be fascinated. Um, so she regressed me and as she regressed me, I, I ended up going down in, you know, into hypnosis and she says, where are you? And I looked down and instead of seeing where I was, I, I saw a, a beach, but like a rocky beach and I'm looking at it and in my hands, I'm holding you know, ropes and nets. Basically, they were nets, but they looked just bundled. And what I was doing was I was tying the net together where it had torn. I was basically repairing the net. And I'm working on this net. And I'm, I'm sitting there. My father was there. His name was Zebedee. Of course, I remember me seeing him and meeting him. But over to my left, there was a crowd of people. And I kept looking at the crowd of people. And I and and the regression is just saying, what are you looking at it? Because she could just see me looking, but not really saying anything. I said, there's a crowd of people. She says, do you want to see what that is? I said, yeah. And I got up and I walked over. And as I walked over to the crowd, it was like I've kind of pushed my way in. And then it kind of parted as I pushed my way in. And he was standing there. And you hear in the regression, I start losing my breath. And then I say, you can feel him. You can feel his presence in front of you. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm catching my breath. I'm catching my breath. And the more I catch my breath, I watch him walk over to me, reach his hand out and place it on my heart. And when he touched my chest, I disappeared from this reality or the reality I was in. And I went into pure, unconditional love and, and could see nothing but white in my, in my, out of my eyes. And I was in this pure space of unconditional love. And in the regression, you, <laughs> I ended up editing my regression because there was about seven minutes of me moaning of, in, this, in this state. And the regressionist got confused. She said, are, are you with him or are you with him? Are you, are you him? Are you with him or are you him? And I said, I am within him. And so we had, he had shown me what unconditional love was. And he shown us, showed me that we are all part of this unconditional love. And by touching me and letting me experience this, this feeling, I was actually blended with him. I was, and, and everybody else around me as well. So I'm with, I was within this loving space. And the regressionist says, are you ready to go to the next important event? And I said, yeah, okay. I, and I really didn't want to go because <laughs> it was pretty nice to be there. <laughs> um, and she, I said, okay. And the next important event was watching him walk away and me back in my fear, me back in, in my reality and in my experiencing my life. You know, you often wonder when you're, especially when you're, when you're someone who studied the Bible, you, why would the disciples just meet someone for the first time and get up and walk away? Mm -hmm. And now I completely understand it. He gave me a glimpse of everything and, and, and everything was love. And so it was like, I had to be with him. That was, there was no question. I had to go figure out what that was and why this is happened, why this happened. Um, and as we, as we walked, you know, through our, our journeys and everything, that feeling never really subsided. And j historically John, and I, and this is in my memories, I remember this as well. John never took a wife. He never took a family. He was, his whole thing was, this was so all encompassing that nothing else mattered at that point. 
Beautiful. And you talk about fear. Oh my gosh, we all experience this in our human incarnations. For, I mean, people have so many different fears. Why the fear? Well, if you think about this, the love, there's, there's love, and then the opposite of love is fear. A lot of times you'll say that, and people say, no, it's not, it's hate. Hate is just a product of fear. That's all it really is. Um, the best definition I've heard, of, heard actually comes from Sufism. In Sufism, they believe God is on one side of a veil, and we're on the other side of the veil, and our life is the struggle against the veil, and the veil is our fear. And so to understand what love is fully... And to understand that feeling, especially because spirituality, in my opinion, is a feeling and not a thinking. It's a feeling. And so to understand love fully, you have to know what fear is to, to, to feel the opposite, to feel the contrast so that you can feel love fully. And so um, we come to this existence to experience our fears. But the, the interesting part about it is I like to liken it to like, Imagine we live in a pure room of love and right beside of us, we have a, a, a fog machine and we have our hand on the knob and we can crank our fear all the way up and not see the room or we can crank it down and see more of it. The, the key is that we have control of this, the fears in our lives, because when you look at fear, fear is nothing but negatively focused uncertainty. You know, fear is an emotional reaction to some future event that may or may not happen with the person thinking it having a negative focus because if they were thinking positively, they would not be afraid. So it really comes down to that negative focus, right? So we get come down here and we experience our separation from God's source, love consciousness from literally having fear as the tool to do that. Well, you just answered my next question, how to, how, how to reduce our fear in it. I mean, you, you described it so beautifully of having, you know, assuming that a future event is going to be negative. Yeah, well, and, well, and think about this. Um, we live in one moment. And, you know, aim, the word amen, most people don't even know what it means. Amen means so be it. It means done right now. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Amen. Joshua says, whatever you ask in God's name is granted. And, and God's name, according to Moses, was I am. And I am is present moment belief. Right? So I am, amen. And whatever you put in the middle is what you're creating into your experience. But the problem is that we have this subconscious belief behind us. That is, a, 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 basically, it has two jobs. The first job is to collect memories of our present moments and stacking them behind us, creating an underlying subconscious belief. The other job it has is that when you focus on something, it shows you what you're focused on. So you, have you ever known a negative person? Yes. I have. <laughs> you ever <laughs> notice they always have something, yeah, they always have something to be negative about, right? Right. Because they're focused on negative, so their subconscious is showing them negative. They're creating a, a, a negative moment, and they're stacking it in their subconscious. So they're on, they're on a fear treadmill, right? And the only way you break the fear cycle is to get very present and consciously choose to make the moment loving and start stacking new present moments that are loving in your subconscious mind. This is what how, how I define the definition of born again. It's not some esoteric thing. It's literally shut down your past and start something new. And so it comes down to this idea that you've got to live loving if you want to love living. That's great. And, and I guess in each moment we have the freedom to choose, uh, I guess, and to choose again. Yeah, absolutely. It just the question of asking it is given, right? You're the one asking. You're the one who's choosing. You're the one who's creating the experience. Here's the, here's the tough part that most people have is that they think that God likes to give positive things, right? And God does not think in positives or negatives. God's source only thinks in focus. So you can, if you're thinking negative, God is going to lovingly show you negative because that's what you're focusing on. That's what you're asking for. Most people don't realize that it's the thoughts and the belief behind the thoughts that are creating your experience. Shakespeare, Shakespeare himself said it in, in Hamlet. Uh, King Claudius says, words without thoughts never to heaven go. 
Okay. Your thought, your belief behind it has to be, has to be, I believe it. That, that quote I said earlier, it says, um, whatever you ask in God's name is granted. If you have faith, it's the next line. And the line after that is nothing will be impossible for you. So what is faith? In, in modern Christianity, that's faith in Jesus. In reality, faith is belief. If you believe it, whatever you ask in God's name, I am, is granted if you have faith, if you have belief. And so I always put my belief into whatever I, I'm asking for, and I usually get it. It's almost, I mean, a, a sort of a parallel to people term it the law of projection or the law of attraction. What we think about, we do create, or we find more of. Yeah, it's it's that the law of attraction is a fascinating um, document. You can find it in, you can find it in all the ancient texts. You know, what you reap, you sow. You know, that's the whole concept of karma: is the whatever you're putting out, you're getting. And you know, it's it's fascinating to me that um, that now it's becoming it's becoming mainstream again because I really believe that we are at a stage. In our, in our spiritual evolution, where our consciousness is rising. And everyone's looking at the world right now, and it's going, especially here in the United States, it's going crazy, and people are yelling and screaming, and they're arguing, and they're fighting, and they're doing that. But, you know, Socrates said, um, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. And basically what's happening right now is things are changing in really dramatic ways. And they're changing for the better. And the people who don't like it are being really loud, and obnoxious and they're creating problems and they're attacking our capital and they're doing all these things because they're it's their own fears rising up and becoming that but the interesting thing is they're the ones that are going to make it on the news they're the ones that are going to make it into the media and everyone's going to see but the reality of it is there's more good things in the world that happen every day than the bad if you look for it and every day if you if you look for it you'll see it Here's, here's the other thing that I really like to talk about is we're making a loving world, but a lot of people get so daunted by all the big things that they think they have to try to change. And their, their job isn't necessarily try to change the big things. Their job is to make their part of the world loving. And that's just as simple as smiling at somebody. You know, I, I'm a guy who naturally smiles anyway. I just, I'm just yeah, you've a, got a beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, when I, when I go to the grocery store and I walk into the grocery store, I usually have a smile on my face. And when I walk in, I'm amazed to watch people do a double take. They look at me and they go, they're shocked to see someone smiling. But you know what happens after that double take? They smile back every time. You know, because you walk through life with a smile. You walk through. It is. And, and it makes, makes the goosebumps pop up on my arm. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> because it, that feeling, that love is, is that you're emanating and you're putting out. I'm sure. Have you ever met someone that you just, you meet them and there's just something about them that makes them kind of stand out in the crowd as positive? Yes, I have. Yeah. Like and you. I do. A, <laughs> Tell us oh, what I'm well, talking well, to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm just thinking of a few questions that the audience might have. What are, I mean, you know, the journey sometimes up and sometimes down and those that may be in a fog and can't seem to get out of it. What is your advice? Yeah. First of all, um, I'm a Star Wars fan. I don't know if you are or not, but Yoda said in this one of the Star Wars movies, uh, he said, um, uh, named must your fear be before banish it you can. <laughs> I have to do my impersonation. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> So named must your fear be before banished that you can. If you find yourself in that negative state, you have to realize that you are in a fear. Because if, if you think of love as the positive and fear as the negative, first of all, recognize that you're in, in the fear. Now, here's, the, here, here's an interesting, cool thing that works every time. Oh, yeah, I you, love this. Yeah. Fear makes us hold air into our body. Most people who, th who are afraid think, I can't breathe. Well, it's not because they can't breathe. It's because their body is storing air to run further and faster because it's a primal response. Actors on Broadway are trained literally when they forget their lines in front of a thousand people to exhale and relax all their muscles. And when they do that, 
all of their lines rush right back into their head because they shut off the fear response and they get back into being them, right? So the first thing you have to do is, is recognize that you're in fear, label it, and then breathe it away. That's why they call it the breath of God because God is at the bottom of every breath. You know, when you exhale and you release. I'm doing that now. Yeah. When you exhale and you release, there's a feeling at the bottom of that. That little tingle you get, that is the minuscule amount of feeling that's, uh, that, I'm sorry, let's just say that. That's just a tiny piece of what I felt when Jeshua touched me on the chest. But, but it was right there at the bottom of my breath, right? When I started, when I shifted my meditations from, you know, breathing meditations or guided meditations, and all I do now when I meditate is I go, and then I feel that feeling. And then I just focus on the feeling and I let that feeling permeate my body and it becomes this massive bliss state. And it, I, I meditate twice a day for 40 minutes and I just go, I get up and I go and I meditate in my room and it's just, it's the greatest time of my day because I'm sitting in bliss for 40 minutes That's twice great. a day. And it, cha- it changed my life because now I'm, I'm understanding that I can walk through my life with that vibration, with that feeling. And when I walk into that grocery store and I'm smiling, I'm feeling that feeling. You know, I'm feeling it now as I'm talking to you because it's, it's you know, this to me is a, is a loving back and forth conversation. And so I, I, I feel it because we're sharing and, you know, we're, we're, we're all in this life thing together and we're supposed to be sharing and, 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 and working with each other. Jeshua himself said it, love one another. That's all, all our conversations really are. And agreed at first, you know, getting into that bliss state or feeling good may be fake it till you make it or keep, you know, it may be a little bit harder, yeah. like exercise, retraining your body right. and your mind, but it, you know, nothing comes necessarily easily. Right. Well, if you think about this, a lot of people can actually say, I have faith and they just do. Most people have to have what I call trust faith. You know, trust is developed by results over time. So you have to do the, start doing small little things. Don't try to do the giant thing for it. Try to do something small. Just go out and smile at somebody. Just go out and do those little things. And then start seeing the results. And the small results over time will build your faith bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like people who meditate. You know, when I first started meditating, I don't know if it was this way for you, but for me, when I started meditating, it was like, quiet the mind. Did you pay your bills? <laughs> I had a thought pop in. So I go back to it again. Is the stove off? Oh, I did it again. My thoughts yeah. are popping in. After the third or fourth time, I can't meditate. But the people who become very good meditators are, all have that same experience. The only difference is they just keep going back until the quiet times start to last longer. And that's, that's the key to good meditation. It's also the good, it's the key to bringing love and, and no, and, pushing the fear out of your life is to just do the small things. And when they shift into something that's, that's not in alignment, you know, just shift it back. You know um, I, I say earlier, I said that we live in one moment, the present moment, the I am moment. Your job really is to make loving moments and stacking them behind you. But every so often, one of those moments is going to get messed up. And when it does get messed up, most people are trained to go, Ah, I'm so dumb. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Right. That's why I went bald because I was like gone. Right. (laughs) But, (laughs) but, but the thing is um, your job is, is to create as many loving present moments as you can not beat yourself because everyone's going to kind of knock down something. What I did was I gave myself permission. I said, I give myself permission to think when the mess ups happen, it's just silly. And so now something happens that's not in alignment. I drop into one of my fears. I go, oh, that's just silly. I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. And I go back to my present moment. And I start stacking all these moments. I've had, I've had amazing, amazing experiences in my life. I mean, I've, I, we could go on for hours with the things that have happened in my life. But um, if, I could, if I could say one thing, you know, if you just live a loving life, 
everything in your life will change because that's our job. Our job is to come here, experience our separation from love. But if you're living loving, you're, you're going back to the source. You're going back to what we're going back, what we're all trying to strive for is to go up into this, this loving existence. Agreed. Um, I just want to ask you a question you spoke before about prayer and, and it will be answered. This is probably a question, well, maybe for me and the audience, a lot of people pray and they, they feel that their prayers aren't answered. Yeah. What would yeah. you say to that? And it, I, it's, very, it's very interesting. Prayer is an interesting word because in most organized religions, prayer isn't, isn't a declaration, it's an affirmation. And I don't believe in affirmations. And I'll tell you why I don't believe in affirmations. Because the word affirmation means I'm firming something up that's not solid. And I believe in declarations. But most people go, go to the church or go to where they pray next to their bed or wherever they pray. And they pray for the same thing over and over again from something external. Rather than being the creator of the experience. You know, I am doing this. I am receiving this. I am creating this. They get into the wanting, needing, hoping, and trying. And I said, you only have one present moment. I am wanting. God is going to answer your prayer and give you wanting. I am needing. I am hoping. I am trying. Right? You, God said, ask and you will, will receive, but you are the one asking. Now, you are the one who is basically putting your order in and, and collecting the result. And so you have to be the part of the creative process. Um, Jeshua said, the father and I are one. He also said, you are the children of God. Well, if that's the case, then, then God is your father too. And so, and so you have the same creative ability. He said, greater works than I have done, you will do. It is your faith that heals you. Um, he never said, uh, you will be healed if you put faith in me. Right. And, it's interesting because when you pray for, especially for like healing, right? It, it all comes down to the person's belief. And so if you're praying for anything, it all comes down to belief. You know, earlier I said, whatever you ask in God's name is granted. If you have faith, you have to have that belief. So almost believe that, I mean, or thank you for receiving that. So it has occurred because there is only now. Right, right. The, you, you just actually said exactly how I personally pray. I say, this is my formula. Thank you, God. Because when you thank for something, you say, hey, can I have a, a, can I have a drink? And they say, thank you, because you have it already. Right. right? Have a drink. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the blank, whatever I want. I am receiving. And I'll give you how, how, how simple this is for me. Um, years ago, I used to refinish furniture as a hobby. And I bought an antique Victorian dresser with a swivel top mirror and I brought it home and it needed complete refinishing, but it was missing the two little finials that hold the mirror on. And so I brought it home and I set it down in my garage and I looking, looking it over and I, Oh, it doesn't have the finials. Thank you, God, for the mirror finials that I am receiving. Amen. Which oh, amen, it's done. So, so never thought about it again, never put it in my head again, because I had faith that I was going to get them. So we so don't need to pray. Two, Sorry to interrupt, but a lot of people no, pray no, no. over and over and over again. Yeah. Put it out there and believe and let it. it go. Cause, right. Because if you, if you don't have faith in it, you're going to say it again. And if you keep saying it over again, you're reaffirming the lack of it mm. rather than the, the receiving of it. So here's what happened to me in that story. I stopped at another store. I bought a rock maple desk to refinish. I brought it home, set it down next to my dresser. The finials were in the drawer of the dresser. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> right. So you, you can, you're going to create anything in your You knew it to be true. I knew it to be true. And, and most people, where they get trapped is they pray for something and then they try to figure out how. Right. So leave and it up to, to God or. Yeah. Actually, give yourself this fun game. You know, I'm asking for this, and oh boy, I can't wait to see how it comes. Because it's going to come in a very unique and interesting way, because that's the way it comes. You know, 
So just look back and laugh and, oh, yeah, that's how it happened. You know, I just love the way you're expressing this. And it's we, everyone knows this and it's so simple, but just sometimes, well, the simplest things are often the best, but it's just reaffirming this moment of now. Um, that takes me on to the question, your past life regression or your past lives. What's your belief? Is it happening now, the other the alternate lives? I, I believe that the time itself is a construct of man. Um, I believe that, that everything's happening at the same time anyway. Am I, am I the reincarnation of John? I have no idea. Uh, am I someone who's just tapping into those memories? I have no idea. I don't think it matters who anybody was 2,000 years ago. I think it only matters who they are in this I am God moment. And so I often tell people, I'm not John the Beloved, I'm John Davis. Right? And, and uh, please don't label me John the Beloved because that'll, that'll be a tough life for me to live. Uh, um, you know, live, John, live here in the now because it's where you are conscious. And when I think of, um, I said time is a construct of man. Many years ago, some two guys were looking at the sky and said, hey, look, it gets dark sometimes. Let's call that a day when it gets in the intervals in between. And so they slowly broke it down to more in minutes and, and months and years, and they did all that. And before that, there was just like, oh, we're living in a world, and that's the way it was. You know, we have all these, these constructs that we, and it's still one of the things that we struggle with now. A lot of the constructs that were made 2,000 years ago, we're still trying to get over them because, you know, well, boy, the, 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 the blanket that just crossed the sky, and now we know that there's not a blanket there, right? We know that there's, there's space and there's, there's the universe and there's all this stuff out there. But we still struggle with that, especially when it comes to organized religion, because there's so much, so much translation and interpretation. And, you know, the, like the Bible itself, it was, it was a oral tradition long before it was written. And then it was written in Aramaic, and then it was translated to Greek, and then to Roman, and then to um, English, and, then to, and German as well. And each person that got a hold of it, translated it and interpreted it. And some of them edited it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're looking at, you're looking at documents now, but so that what you really have to do, if you really want to connect to it is as you're reading these amazing books, these amazing texts, you know, the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vakanamrut, as you're reading them, you know, only take what's true for you. Only what, what rings true to your heart. Um, Buddha said, um, believe no one, even me, unless it rings true to your heart. You, know, you have it, my, my mother, who was the greatest spiritual teacher of my life, she had her master's degree in liturgy. She was head of liturgical doctrine at our Catholic church. And when I turned 18 and had finished my 12th year of, of, of CCD, she said, John, spirituality is a personal journey. You need to find what you believe. And she let me just do whatever I wanted. And over the next many years, I traveled through India and all through the Middle East and Asia. I went to Peru and climbed Machu Picchu. I, I climbed Mount Sinai in, in Israel. You know, I, 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 I studied with gurus and, I, and I, I just wanted to find out what I believe. Somebody just asked me yesterday, when I'm reading the Bible, how do I know what, what do I believe? And, yeah. and I'm like, to me, I'm like, get out of your head and into your heart. You know, the other day I told a story about this story of Adam and Eve. And the, the video was called uh, Eve Was Not the Villain, right? Because they've made Eve to be out to be the villain for everybody. And it's terrible because there was a snake there too. <laughs> um, and more so, what was the actual transgression that they did? They plucked fruit from the tree of knowledge. So they got there and they got into their head. And they started thinking and they started wrapping things around the simple. You know, they talk about masculine and feminine energies. The masculine is in the head, the feminine is in the body. It's the feeling. And as I said earlier, spirituality is a feeling, not a thinking. It's, it's coming to that space of realizing that this feels right for me, or this sounds like truth to me. And that's what the Bible statement of, let those who have eyes to see, see, and those who have ears to hear, hear. He's basically saying, if it feels right to you, if it looks right to you, that's what you follow. 
Absolutely, and that could be for any. I mean, that's a wonderful guidance for all aspects of life, really. Um, with your tutelage with Jesus, what 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 do you feel here is in the context of time of this interview? What are his main teachings to the world? He, or well, his main teachings are so simple they're they're hard to grasp. But <laughs> you <laughs> right right. Yeah. I actually say that in my regression. Um, we are love. We are, we are an expression of love. That's why we're here. We are here to experience love through our fears, through our separation. And that Joshua never wanted to be deified. He never wanted to be put on a pedestal. He, he was saying repeatedly, he is the same as us. But the difference between us and Joshua, the, here's the, the, key, the key phrases. I am the son of God. You are the children of God. The only difference between those two statements is one of them has declared it and the others hadn't. And what he wanted us to do was step into our, into our divine self, or as I would call it, your Christed self, step into that role, because I think that's where we're headed right now. Right? And that's, how, that's the, the core essence of Jeshua's teaching. Do what's right for you, make it loving, reduce your fear, and, you, and you'll get everything you want in life if you have faith, if you believe in your own divinity. John, I've just loved our conversation. We, I know it seems short, but we've just covered so much in such simple, <laughs> clear tools and tips for the audience. Um, is there anything you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you or on a final note uh, or a message for the world? The, the main message I would say is your present moment is all you have. Make it the best one you possibly can. Make it the most loving one you possibly can and let the rest take care of itself. Because if you do that, you literally are going to change the world. A magnificent way to end the show. John Davis, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. I can't wait to re-listen to this. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm overjoyed to be here. It's been wonderful. I, I, I truly am a fan of your channel, so I'm <laughs> kind of excited to meet you and oh, be yay. here with you. <laughs> thank you. And okay. You guys have a great day. You too. Bye, John. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.